All right, so I had case B um, where this individual had um, injury to all eight flexor tendons in zones three and four of the hand, as well as um, damages to the median and ulnar nerves. Um, so these are some exercises that I would prescribe as a part of his home exercise program, as well as um, during supervised therapy when he comes to see me for PT. Um, the first one that I would do initially um, within weeks one to three would be, um, so this would be the injured hand, and he would be in a dorsal extension splint, um, like so. Um, but ex um, exercises I would do as well as he can do at home would be doing passive flexion of all the digits and then having him do passive extension. So he would just extend against my hand. I wouldn't be putting pressure there, but I would just be guiding his hands into extension just because those flexor tendons were repaired. And so we want to have motion, but we want to have protected extension of those flexor tendons so there's um, no re-rupture and that he, the patient can feel um, the tension occurring within those tendons so we don't overdo it. So that would be um, what the main exercise to do between weeks one and three um, besides immobilization, but we want to get him moving as soon as possible but as safely as possible. Um, and then starting with weeks three to six, we would start keep doing those um, to gain that range of motion back as well as exercises such as extending the wrist where your um, fingers automatically kind of extend and then flexing of the wrist where your fingers automatically flex. And so just working on range of motion of the wrist as well as the fingers at the same time. Um, so that would be a main exercise to do um, between weeks um, three to four mainly. And then moving on to week six, we would do kind of like the six pack of the hands. So we would be doing exercises, so straight fingers, and then bent here, and then maybe a hook, half fist, and then full fist. So we'd be doing those at week six, full fist, just to gain range of motion of those fingers. So we can begin that at week six. And so we'll be doing that just to gain, like I said, the range of motion back. Um, something else you can do, probably starting at about that time as well, week six, is to um, um, just specifically treat the flexor digitorum superficialis and the profundus. So what you can do is you can individually or with all your um, digits kind of just work the superficialis with flexion at the PIP as well as the flexor digitorum profundus with flexion at the DIP. And so you can um, isolate those and work on movement there as well as just at the MCP joint. So again, I would incorporate that at around six weeks as well. Um, and then when you get to a point where you can do some um, resistive exercises as well as more functional exercises, you can do either putty um, or a ball and just kind of squeeze that. Um, not very hard, not with a lot of tension right away. Um, just kind of um, working those um, intrinsic and extrinsic muscles of the hand to gri um, work back grip strength without overdoing it. Because as we learned in class, if you test it on a dynamometer, um, there could be a chance for re rupture. So we want to go slow with that, but still gain strength. Um, and then some other functional exercises would be to do pickup exercises. And so what you would do is you would um, place a tennis ball or something on the table in front of you or you're on the floor, maybe smaller objects and just practice picking up different size objects um, and working on kind of a grasp and um, flexion of those digits, as well as maybe they're called crumblers. And so you have like a piece of paper in front of you and then, or a towel even, and then you just start with the edge and you just crumble it. So almost like this here. So you'd have a piece of paper and you would just work on crumbling like so. And so those are some exercises to work on range of motion, strength, um, grip strength, and then getting back to um, resistive exercises and functional exercises that he can use in his daily life for ADLs as well as um, work duties. And so we would be doing those just to gain motion in his hand because obviously we all need our hands um, for lots of activities. Um, but just so there's no adhesions, no contractures that occur. And then, um, and then he also had damage to his median and ulnar nerves. And so if there was actually, um, if they were repaired as well with the tendon, um, the flexor tendon repair, we can also do probably at the six week mark, do those um, tendon gliding exercises or the nerve gliding exercises as well for the median and ulnar nerves um, to make sure that those um, aren't 
um, forming adhesions. So we just want to make sure that there's that three millimeter space for our tendons and our nerves to move um, so that he can be functional.